So let's start combining those. We've dealt with adding and subtracting in inequalities, multiplying and dividing. Now if we have them mixed together, what's it going to look like? We have to keep that in mind to flip the sign when we multiply or divide by a negative. So again, all of our problem solving techniques that we've used so far, problem solving techniques can be used on inequalities. So just as we solve regular equations with an equal sign, we can do those same problem solving techniques, but the one thing we have to remember, to reverse the inequality when we are multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So we just have that one little piece of the extra information. Have to flip the sign if we multiply or divide by a negative. So we're just going to practice a whole bunch of examples. In this case, trying to get x on its own, so I need to move what first? 6. So if I subtract 6 from both sides, it's going to be gone on the left. On the right, what are we going to have? Minus, just kidding, plus 1. And I need to have that a coefficient 1 on the front. So I'm going to divide by minus 5. But what do I have to remember? I'm dividing by negative, so I need to flip the inequality. And again, with a negative, I can assign it to the outside of the number, the top or the bottom. So in that case, I'm just going to throw it on the outside. So, getting used to that uh, solution set notation, this is all the x values such that x is less than minus one-fifth. Okay, not so bad. We just have to remember flip the sign, reverse the inequality, if we multiply or divide by a negative. So that next example, again, combining some more, well, it's for you to try. Take it, see what you get. Solve for y, give it to me in simplified set notation. So what did you move first? I like to get my ones together. I'm gonna move this constant 24 to the other side. So when I subtract from both sides, I don't have to flip any signs, it still holds true. So I'm looking at minus 7y less than or equal to 11y minus, what, 38? Okay, I need my y's together, so now we want to subtract 11y from both sides. So when we do that, what are we left with on the left? I've got minus 18 factors of y, it's less than or equal to minus 38. We need to divide both sides by minus 18 to get y on its own. So what do we have to do? Flip that sign, don't forget. So I'm looking at minus 38 over minus 18. So we want to simplify as far as we can go. And as we're looking at this, what is a negative divided by a negative, first of all? It's positive, so we can just drop that. And is there anything in common between those two that we can take out of both of them? They're both even, so a factor of 2. If we do that, what are we left with? We know it's going to be positive, and 38 divided by 2 gives us 19. 18 divided by 2 gives me 9. So again, the set will learn notation. I'm just going to throw it onto that answer because you won't be able to see it down there set of all y's such that y is greater than or equal to 19 over 9. We always want to have it in the most simplified form possible. So on the next page, you'll see the exact same inequality sentence written in two different spots. So we're going to solve these in two different ways. Talk about the differences between the two. So we're going to take that first one and just attack it like we've normally been doing. Get my y's together get my constants together and report it in that set notation. So, what do we want to do first? I'm trying to get the y's on its own, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 17 from both sides. So, minus 5 y is greater than 8 y minus 9 minus 17. So, over on the right, we're looking at minus 26 as our constant. Trying to get the y's together, so I'm going to subtract 8 y from both sides. So, what am I looking at over here? Minus 13y is greater than minus 26. So, divide by minus 13. What has to happen? What do we have to remember? 
flip the sign since we're dividing by a negative. So y is less than, what does that simplify to? Negative divided by a negative gives us positive. 13 goes into 26, two times. So y is less than 2 is our solution. Okay, so let's do this one a little bit differently. Instead of moving 17 first, I'm going to go ahead and move minus 5y first. So how is that going to change things? Got 8y plus 5y minus 9. So again, 13 minus 9. Trying to get this thing on its own, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides. When we do that, what are we looking at? 26 is greater than 13y. I want y on its own, so I need to divide by 13 positive. So 2 is greater than y. Or, naturally, we like to see the variable first, so equivalent to this. How can we rewrite it? y is less than 2. So in this case, we did all of that, and we didn't have to worry about flipping the sign when we divided by negative, because we didn't have a negative to divide by in this case. So in this one, we didn't have to worry about flipping the sign. Didn't have to flip sign. But in this one, we had to divide by that negative and pay attention and remember to flip it. Had to divide by negative. But we got the same answer, and the algebra is all still valid. But I feel like if I have to divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, I'm more likely to forget that step and have a mistake in my work. But we could also work towards keeping the coefficient positive. So you'll notice over here, okay, we moved 17 first, and the coefficient was negative on the front of y in all of the work. But in this case, I have a positive 8 and a minus 5. So I move him to the other side, and I'm keeping with positive, 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 positive. So I personally like to work towards keeping that coefficient positive, if I can help it. So I don't have to worry about dividing by a negative. Sometimes it's inevitable, but most of the time we have a choice with what do we want to move first. And if we can keep that positive, it's generally helpful. You can solve these in any which way your heart desires, but I'm going to work towards keeping my coefficient positive so I don't have to worry about dividing or multiplying by negatives. So let's go ahead and solve this inequality. First example. First thing that needs to happen, we need to get rid of those parentheses. So distribute anything that needs to go on the inside. So I'm looking at 3x minus 6 less than 2 minus 5 needs to go into both of those. So minus 5 times x will give me minus 5x. Minus 5 times plus 6 is going to give me minus 30. Okay. Now, we can combine our like terms over on the right, make life easier. So I've got minus 30 and 2, so I'm looking at minus 5, minus 28. I'm working towards keeping my coefficients positive. So should I move 3x over here? or 5x to the left. 5x to the left, because it'll be positive over here. So I've got 5, 6, 7, 8 of them, if I add 5x to both sides. Keeping that positive, so I'm not going to move him. I need it on its own, so I need to add 6 to both sides. So we're looking at minus 22, okay? So again, I want x on its own, we divide by 8. Positive on both sides, so I don't need to flip any signs. And we want to simplify that as far as possible. So what can I take out of 22 and 8 that they both share in common? Factor of 2. If I do that, I'm left with minus 11 over 4. It doesn't go down any farther since we have an odd and an even. So work towards keeping that coefficient positive. It'll save you that little mistake of having to flip the sign. So go ahead and take that try. Solve the inequality and see what you get. So you got to get rid of the parentheses, distribute it in. So 3 times 7 gives us 21 plus 6x less than or equal to 30 plus 7x minus 7. We can combine our like terms on the right. So I've got 7x plus 23. And what do I want to move? 
keep my coefficient positive, do I want to move 6x or 7x? I want to move 6x, because when I subtract from both sides, I'll be left with 1 factor of x plus 23. So I need to subtract 23 from both sides to get x on its own. So we're looking at what over here? Minus 2 less than or equal to x, but again, naturally we like to read it with the variable first. So equivalent to this is going to be what? x greater than or equal to minus 2. Throwing it in that set builder notation just to get comfortable with it. Okay. If you didn't work towards keeping that coefficient positive, you still get the same answer, but you have to worry about, do I need to flip that sign when I'm dividing by a negative? So how's the next example different than what we've seen before, the next two? I have decimals and I have fractions. So have we dealt with any cases where we have fractions and decimals in an equation or an inequality equation? How do I get rid of those? So we'll deal with this one first. How many decimal places do I have to move? How do I clear those uh, decimals? So in this case, I need to move all the decimals one to the right to be dealing with whole numbers. So we multiply again by the greatest number of decimal places. So in this case, what do we need to multiply by on both sides? Factor of 10. So if I multiply by 10 over here, oop, don't flip the sign, and 10 over here, it will move all of our decimal places. We'll do with whole numbers. So 10 times 2.1 will give me 21x. Again, moving the decimal. Now we're dealing with whole numbers, which we like. And again, 10 times 1.2 will give us 12, 84x. All right, so take the rest of that, give it a shot. Solve for x, tell me what you get. So working towards keeping the coefficient positive, I want to move minus 84x to this side. When I do that, we're going to be looking at 105x plus 432 is greater than or equal to 12. And now I want to move 423 to the other side. I want that term on its own. So when we subtract 12 minus 432, we are looking at 420. Greater than or equal to minus 420. So I want to divide both sides by 105 to get x on its own. So x has to be greater than or equal to what? Minus 4. And again, set builder notation. Set containing x such that x is greater than or equal to minus 4. Seems kind of redundant when we only have one variable involved since this is exactly the same as what's seen here. But get comfortable with that set notation. Once we have more dimensions, um, it'll be easier. It'll come easier to you. Okay, so we can deal with decimals. Multiply by the greatest number of decimal places using a factor of 10 to move it. And what about if I have fractions? I want to multiply by what to clear those denominators? Multiply by LCD to get rid of all of them. So between 3, 6, and 2... The LCD is looking like what? 6. So if I multiply everything on the left by 6, and everything on the right, what are we left with now? So 6 into the first one. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 2 times 2 will give me 4. 6 divided by 6, I'll have that minus 1 left over. 6 divided by 2 will give me 3. Move into the right. 6 divided by 6 gives me 1, so I'm just left with that 7. 6 times 2 will give me 12x. So we cleared out all those denominators. Now I'm dealing with whole numbers, which I like. When I combine my like terms, I have about 4, 5, 6, 7 factors of x over here. Which one do I want to move? 7x or 12x? To keep the coefficient positive, I want to move him to the other side. So when I subtract 7x from 12x, I'm left with 5. I want that guy on its own, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And we want to divide by 5. So negative 8 fifths 
greater than x. We like to read it in the other way. So for my set notation, I want all x such that what? x usually comes first. x is less than minus 8 fifths. And if you aren't sure, you can always choose a value in here, plug it back into the original, make sure that it actually works. But we can deal with those large, complicated cases. If you have decimals, multiply by a factor of 10 to clear them, deal with those whole numbers. If you have fractions, multiply by the LCD to clear them, deal with whole numbers.